What a day. So first job we've got, we've got a gas leak and then we've got boiler on fire. We've got all sorts of stuff in this video today. Um, we've also got some stuff from, from Lee and some of her, we've got a bit from Elliot as well. So there's quite a lot in this video today. Um, if you're a gas engineer, if you're a plumber, I did a poll recently and 50% of, I think it was 49% of the people that watch my channel are plumbers, 20% are trainees. So if you are a gas engineer or a plumber, do you do a tightness test when you go do a boiler service? Please put a comment below and let me know what you what you do. Obviously, um, as a, as a whole, as a you know as a rule, we don't normally do a tightness test. Should it be something that we should do? Um, yeah, please put a comment below. If you're a member at public, put a comment below. Let me know what you think. Should should we do a tightness test when we come and do a service on your boiler? So yeah. Let's, uh, let's move on to some of these videos. The first service we've got today is a Valen Ecotech Pro. And as soon as I've opened this cupboard door, I could smell gas. Normally, we wouldn't put a, a test on. Uh, we wouldn't put a tightness test on when we're doing a service. On this one, I'm changing all seals, putting some new electrodes in as well, um, and doing a proper full strip down service. But as I say, we wouldn't normally do a tightness test when we're doing a service. You can see here, you can see it's all bubbling. So I've just sprayed some leak detector on there. A bit of an unusual place to see a leak. It's not, it's not normal really. If you have a look there, you can see where it's all black and it's stained. It's obviously been leaking for quite some time. As I say, please put a comment below and let me know if you are a gas engineer, do you do a tightness test when you're doing a boiler service? What a shocker that was. Um, yeah. What we did on that, we did a full service on that. I did a full strip down service, but later on in video, we've got Lee um, and Lee's done a, a strip down service on a villain as well. So I'm not going to repeat it in the same video. It don't, don't make sense. Um, so yeah, next, next job we've got. This this has been on contract with a with a big company for quite a long time, and they're having problems with overheating. They're getting F seventy fives, F twenty twos, all all sorts of stuff on this boiler. So what we'll do, we'll go out, we'll have a look and see, see what's going on with it. I think this system needs flushing. That just shows you the importance of when you install a new boiler, the system also needs flushing. So yes, we can put a filter on, filters are great, but we still need to flush the system first. So that just shows you the importance of that. Um, a quick question, if you are a gas engineer or plumber, do you clean the filter out? Because there can be a nightmare. So yeah, please put a comment below, let me know if you clean the filter out. Um, I tend to install, or I've installed a lot of TF1 uh, filters in the past, and I always clean them out because they're really easy to clean out. Um, but yeah, please put a comment below. What we've got now, I'm just going to, there's loads of stuff in this video today, but I'm just going to go over to Elliot just for a quick water leak. Um, yeah, so let's go and have a look at that. Okay, not sure if you can see that, but <laughs> there, focus, see that little jet, is how flexible hoses, we prefer them to go like this rather than explode, but see that tiny little hiss. There we go, there it is. So, on further investigation, took all this bit of ply up, but you can see the uh, chipboard below. Let me get the focus and the camera in. <laughs> you see that? This is beyond its saturation point. You can see it all gathering around my finger. I'll take the focus a bit better for you. But 
So I wouldn't trust that's not gonna rot out now it's got that wet. So this will be at some point, tool it out. Um, new board in, probably whatever, tool it back in jobby. All from a tiny, tiny, tiny little leak you'd never actually hear. So as you could see, that tiny little, tiny little mist coming off that flexi hose um, that has obviously caused it to be pretty bad on the board there. And it's traveled right underneath the end layer, right up to here. So I'm gonna cut this piece of lino up. The landlord can throw a new bit of lino down, but this needs to thoroughly dry out. Um, luckily the floor beneath it all actually seems pretty solid, but these little bits of um, ply are definitely dead. So a very, very slow leak. Um, but it's been uh, been going for a long time. So keep your eye out. Morning to the Island Heart Fan Club. This is just a quick one, and hopefully this helps a few um, few peeps out there. But when you've seen burn marks on um, hob controls or gas fire controls, um, obviously it could be they've used a large wok or a large frying pan or cooking pan or something, and the flames and the heat is lipping up and burning these. But one good thing to check is with your sniffer. Um, get your sniffer on, light the appliance, run around the gas tap with the edge of the sniffer. Give me a second. I can't do this all with one hand, so I'm just gonna imitate it, but run around with the sniffer when it's off, run around with the sniffer when it's on, high, low, and anywhere in between, and then run it on high for 10, 15 minutes if you have time whilst you're doing some paperwork and then test it again because sometimes it takes a while for the gas to start creeping out. And also continuously push down on the valve, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, and then test test it with the sniffer as well. And that'll give you an idea whether it is at the actual valve on the cooker or the fire that's leaking and then small flames are lipping up, or whether it is just the fact the customer or tenant is using a large pan um, and it's doing heat damage to it. Obviously, Whatever you find is how you're going to classify it. I These are not leaking. I'm going to be swapping out these two controls and therefore not needing to shut the hub, hob off. We're worried about signs of heat damage, scorching, etc, etc, etc. But yeah, hopefully that's helpful for some of you out there. Don't mean to teach you to suck eggs because I'm sure a lot of you already know that and do that. But yeah, hopefully that helps you out. And those that don't have a sniffer, grab one. I personally have gone from the Anton. Um, I don't know if they still make this one. But for me, it's the one that's lasted and worked the best over the years. So I'm going to keep it going. Cheers. Bye -bye. Okay, so just coming out to service this for a customer. Um, another reason why you take the case off to serve as a boiler. Um, and get your head up above the boiler. I mean, this is a dream. It's floor level in a cellar. But get up on the top and check all the screws are in. So other than the fact this one's burning, it's burning out, as you can see there. So that's been replaced, the baffle set's been replaced. New burner seal, because the burner seal is, it's not completely dead, but it's not great. You see the cracks on it there, look. But just check that all the screws are in. This one, two screws are in at the front. Sorry about that, people always phoning up. Um, two screws in at the front as they are, but on the back, the screw was in, but it was doing nothing. And when you look inside, you have the little clips here, and that's the real one, doesn't have one in. Carrier pack on board, because I see this all the time. There's the part number, 8710-609-0150, or you can just get you know, a box of whatever, multi ones, but I just grab the ones from Worcester, it's just easier. Um, and slip it on, job done. Just another reason to service a boiler properly, rather than just sticking an analyzer in it, and is it okay? Well, yeah, I stuck the analyzer in this, even with the baffle, my you know, baffle's only just starting to wear out, but it'd probably be all right. The, the uh, burner seal hadn't gone all the way through, so it'd probably pass, technically, pass. But do you really want to put your name to something that you haven't taken the case off? Just a heads up, really, just a thought. There we go. Stock. Also, the other little thing I've noticed is, um, see that pin there just above my finger? That's a retaining pin that runs through each individual burner strip holds them in position. Now they're not moving around, but why is it out of position? Uh, it should be just coming through to that side as well. So why is it out of position? 
what's the last engineer not done um, yeah supposedly this was serviced 4th of March there apparently 4th of March this year but we'll see what we find so there's the burner out so obviously the burner lived like that and you could see that pin sticking out there not there and when you have a look you see there's the rod I'm trying to balance this up rods there look and it's missing the end burner strip now don't get me wrong I understand unless you, unless you grab hold of that burner strip there that end one and pull it it's not going to move but that's not what I'm talking about it's just the principle so when you're checking these things out just make sure the rods are pushed back in let's give it a little knock with a hammer it's not that hard yeah give it a go thank you for that Elliot some really interesting um, some really interesting clips there and we're going to go back to Elliot shortly Elliot's going to talk to us a little bit more about that Worcester um, now we're going to go over to Lee I've also still got a few more jobs that I've been to as well um, so yeah um, let's go see what Lee's doing hey Alan uh, bit of domestic today cool uh, yeah I guess which one it is Always oh, nice to do a bit of domestic every now and again. Kind of breaks it up a bit. So, yeah, it's a bit grubby. Give that a nice polish. Yeah, happy it is. Cool. Yeah, so put a new burner door seal on because uh, I don't know when this will last done. Um, yeah, and. Uh, Set of electrodes I'll be going in because I don't know when they were last done. Um, yeah, so but obviously, new gaskets. There they are, there they are. Yeah, some new nuts because I don't know when they were last done. Um, yeah, cool. Um, all nice and shiny inside now. Insulation's in good nick. So, uh, yeah, probably do all else. Uh, get it back together. Happy days. Yeah, like I said, but uh, yeah, we're only, I think it was 22 quid, 23 quid for the gasket and electrodes. Cheapest chips. So, peace of mind. Yeah, we'll get that whacked in. Cool. Yeah, so, anyway. Just come across from it. I actually thought uh, when you come to put nuts back on, I thought it was around about on these valence, around about seven, seven and a half, eight newtons on the torque wrench. And you know um, how uh, Alan always bangs on about uh, manufacturer's instructions. So turns out it's six. Hmm. Don't, I don't know. Anyway. I'll put it six and uh, see how we go. Cool. Yeah, so how many times have we got to put that on? <laughs> yeah, I always leave a little note to me saying. Cool. Thank you very much for that, Lee. And as Lee said, it's always important to read, read the installation instructions. I'm always going to bang on about that because what we say, anybody who says anything in any of these videos that I do, it's all just opinions. So you need to check with installation instructions with gas regs and make sure that you're doing it correctly. Different people do things different ways as well. This is These are just to sort of give you an idea, give you some, hopefully help you on your way if you're training to become a gas engineer. What I'm gonna do now, go over to one of my jobs um, that I've installed, show you that, and then we'll go back to, Elliot's got a little bit of, um, Elliot wants to have a little bit of a chat to you. So yeah, let's go over to my job. So we've got a valent combi boiler that we're removing here. So we're just gonna swap this and we're gonna put a new boiler in. We're gonna put um, an ideal Vogue onto this, into this job. As we can see there, the filter on this is on the floor. So we'll swap it over, we'll put it onto return. We're just gonna flush the system. So the, the old boiler is working. It's leaking, but it's working. 
So we'll flush it with the old boiler in place. So we've put some Sentinel X800 cleaner in this. And that clean, other cleaners are available. So just use whichever cleaners you feel you know, suits you best. As you can see in there, it's just leaking on the inside. So it could have been repaired, but the customer wants a boiler with a long warranty. So we're going to put this Ideal Vogue in here. And after we've installed the new boiler, also we'll do lots and lots of flushing. And then we'll test it with the AD Pro Check to make sure that it's, it's clean. So the customer knows that the boiler is clean and the system is clean when we've installed it. Yeah, so that's the, that's the ideal Vogue. Um, most important things without things to take from that is flushing the system. Most important thing of all, in my opinion, or one of the most important things, obviously you won't want to leave any gas leaks and all like that, but mo one of the most important things is flushing the system, but also recording that you flush the system as well. So I use the AD Pro Check, and I think that's a really good tool because you can email that to the customer. Customer's got proof that when that boiler was installed, it was installed correctly. And then if there's any issues in future, three, four, five years down the line, You've got some sort of record to prove that you that you did a good job. Um, yeah, I used the uh, Ideal Halo on there. Is it Halo? Um, plug it in up front and then it, it just works. I, I might do a video on that at some point, but I, I found that that were very, very easy just to click in uh, and use. Re really good. It's also got the Ideal filter on there because... For the warranties now you have to use the manufacturer's filters so it's got it's actually the fernox one which i prefer um the um the fernox amiga filter the new ones now they've got a new one that's made by ad which i don't think it's not as good as the as the amiga one in my opinion anyway if you think differently please put a comment below let me know what you think uh, one thing i wanted to tell you as well the van i've still got the van the electric van this goes back in um next week but i've ordered a new one so i'm gonna have uh, my own electric van it's a second hand one so i bought a second hand one and we'll see see how we go with that might do some more reviews on that if if anybody are in, if you're interested in that please put a comment below again if you want to know more about electric vans um yeah um, I'm babbling on now. Uh, what I'll do now, go back over to Elliot. Elliot wants to tell you a little bit about this Worcester Bosch that he were doing. Um, and and that, that's it for me in this video. Um, thank you to everybody who helps, supports, etc. And yeah, let's go over to Elliot. I had an epiphany the other night. And it was about lack of servicing on certain appliances and bits and bobs and poor workmanship within the trade, not just the heating trade, electricians as well. I think it's the price being driven down. Um, in my opinion, things like Checker Trade um, and all these other companies, Rated People and all these other companies that offer boiler installations for a really, really low price. It's great for the end user being a low price, but the installer, um, you're not getting paid a lot. Now, not all the installers, but this is just my opinion, that the ones that I tend to see um, don't earn a lot of money. They might be getting 300, 350 quid to fit a boiler. And they've got to get it in. They've got to get it in quick to make any money. And in my opinion, my personal opinion, new build as well, it's all about whoever gets the cheapest price gets the contracts. And again, they've just got to get it in. They've got to throw it in. This is only in what I've seen. Not all installers not all uh, big building firms but in what i see and for instance there's people out there that are doing boiler servicing for 30 quid 40 quid 50 quid you're not giving yourself because it's such a low price you've got to be in and out to make any money at the end of the day you know your business if you're a one-man band your business is going to cost you anywhere between 60 and 80 pound a day to run before you put the key in the ignition so with that in mind you've got to do a lot of work to make it pay. But if you're just doing these boiler services for 30, 40 quid, you haven't got time to be here for the full time to strip everything out, to replace these little screws when they're, and the, um, and the little thingy jiggies, you know, the retaining clips, when they're missing, 
you're just getting in, getting out, getting done. See you later. Not checking water quality and things like this. So we're hurting ourselves, really. Um, stop doing it. I'll tell you now, my boiler service fee is £70 plus VAT. And it's the same price to do a landlord's gas safety check. Because I don't do a landlord's gas safety check without doing a service. And a landlord's gas safety check is actually more work than just a boiler service. Um, because I've got to service the boiler and have a look for all available, easily accessible gas pipe work. Make sure it's all routed correctly. You do that anyway. You cast your eye when you're doing a boiler service. But you don't start pulling out ovens to look in behind the uh, the gas supply to the hob and stuff. But, yeah. You've got to you've got to charge right, and then you're not stressed off your tits. You're just doing the job. You're giving yourself enough time to do the job, enough time to take out kit. You know, if I just stuck an analyzer in this, as, as I said, it'd probably be fine, probably pass. But how long is that seal going to last? How long is that there? It's starting to go like badly. I don't know you can see in the camera, but it's really really corroded. How long is that going to last before it does go ooh, throw the limits out and then start sitting up and causing havoc and what's the point? And if none of us accepted the prices that all these online companies pay, guess what? They'd have to put their prices up and they'd have to pay you more. And if you're short of work, you know, installers, if you are and service engineers, if you're short of work, speak to another firm and subby to them. They're gonna pay you more than the online companies. You haven't got to pay for the business in the first place. I know advertising is advertising, you pay to advertise this and the other, but I don't pay for work. Go to a company that is busy and go, look, I'll give you three or four days a week or however many days a week you can. If they're busy, they will give you work. And then what will happen is all these online companies, they'll go, damn it, we haven't got anybody to do the work. We'll have to pay, rather than 30 quid for a service, we'll have to pay people the going rate. Obviously, depending where you are around the country, 60, 70, 80, 90 pound a boiler service, plus VAT, um, if you're VAT registered. And for a boiler install, we're gonna have to pay them at least 600 pounds to do a boiler install. If you're getting 600 quid, you've got time to do a proper chemical flush, a magna cleanse flush, a power flush. You, I mean, power flushing should be an extra anyway, but you've got time to do the job properly. You're not stressed out. Now. We all get stressed out anyway. Um, I'm, I'm constantly stressed out because I've got too much work on. But you've got to, you've got to make money. You're not in it for a charity. If you're doing border services with 30 quid, you may as well go and stack shelves in Sainsbury's and have zero stress, zero overheads, and you know work set set hours. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be doing that because 30 quid. If I was servicing this properly for 30 pounds, I'd be earning nothing. Nothing. It's pointless. You would be earning less than £10 an hour, and you can't be self-employed. Anyway, I'm rabbiting on. I'm babbling on like Alan. Um, just a thought. And this Friday, this Friday, not even lunchtime, um, I'm sat here with my mate Nicky, and I thought I'd go through the di diagnostics of how to eat a hell of a nice breakfast roll and cheesy chips while well, sat on Brixham Harbour side enjoying life. So what you do basically is just um, smash it. <laughs> there we go. Have a good weekend all. So are magnetic filters worth, worth fitting? We shall see. Well, I would say so, wouldn't you? Good job, Aidy. Great filter.